Wouldn't it be nice to have flying cars that can bring you from point A to point B fast and with an acceptable range and flight speed? Wouldn't it be also nice to have very high range electric cars with a range of about 1000 kilometers or 600 miles? But I mean real world usable range like at highway speeds or even in winter? And wouldn't it be also very nice if we finally had electric airplanes that would be much more silent and also much more efficient than current day airplanes? Well yes, these things would be certainly very nice. But up until now there was always one thing standing in the way of such advancements. Namely the limited energy density of lithium ion batteries. But that is about to change. If you would ask someone what is the critical threshold of the gravimetric energy density which a lithium ion or similar sort of battery should have in order to allow us to build electric airplanes, viable flying cars and even super long range electric cars, most experts would say that 400 watt hours per kilogram is the lower threshold and that 500 watt hours per kilogram is the threshold that would be ideal, meaning where things would really start to look very nice. When we say that batteries have a certain energy density, we distinguish between volumetric and gravimetric energy density, meaning how much energy density is contained within a certain volume or a certain mass respectively. Currently, we are hovering around 260 to 270 watt hours per kilogram of gravimetric energy densities. That means that for example a 75 kilowatt hour battery, which is currently considered a pretty good size in a medium sized electric car, weighs about 300 kilograms. That is certainly not very light. But of course, the higher we can make the energy density, the more energy you can press into the same weight. If a 300 kg weighing battery would now have twice the energy density, then of course suddenly you would have a 150 kilowatt hour battery which is currently considered incredibly large for electric vehicles. There aren't many vehicles on the road with such supersized batteries and therefore of course we would like to have much higher energy densities which would allow us to build very high range electric cars of 1000 kilometers or 600 miles of real world usable highway range. Not long ago in 2023 Chinese researchers announced that they achieved a battery energy density of a staggering 711 watt hours per kilogram, almost three times as much as what is currently the standard in electric cars. That would mean that a 300 kilogram weighing battery, such as the one in the Tesla Model 3, would contain 213 kilowatt hours. With such a battery, you could comfortably travel 600 miles or 1000 kilometers at highway speeds. That's how insane this actually is. We can see that the energy density we keep getting in the lab is continuously improving and this really looks like an exponential curve. As so often, technology doesn't evolve in a linear fashion but as an exponential curve. If that trend continues, we could have extremely high energy density batteries sooner than we think. Now of course that 711 watt hours per kilogram battery is still quite far away from being put into production. But in 10 to 20 years time, it is completely thinkable that such energy densities could be put into production. With such energy densities, we could see viable electric airplanes. However, we shouldn't cheer too fast. The problem namely is the following. The energy density of kerosene is stupidly high compared to batteries. Just insanely high. While the volumetric energy density of that 711 watt hours per kilogram battery would be 1653 watt hours per liter, 
the energy density of kerosene is a frivolous 10,300 watt hours per liter. Even gasoline has 9,600 watt hours per liter of volumetric energy density. And even coal sits at 6,500. So basically the energy density of kerosene is a relaxed 14.5 times higher than some of the highest energy density batteries we currently have in the labs. Ouch. Why nature, why? You give us these dead plants and dinosaurs at a crazy high energy density, you tempt us with these high energy densities, we naturally as humans want to burn that stuff in order to harness its power, and then afterwards you tell us that this is bad because we're warming up the planet? Thanks a lot nature. Really, thanks a lot. Anyway, so it will be quite a while, even with such high energy densities of 711 watt hours per kilogram or 1653 watt hours per liter, until we can reach the vicinity of energy densities of kerosene. Now sure, CATL just showed that already now they plan to soon release the first commercially available 500 watt hour per kilogram battery, which would allow for electric airplanes. But when we say airplanes here, we shouldn't forget that these would be short-range electric airplanes or maximum mid-range airplanes. So for instance, for a flight from a city to another city within a country. That would be ideal for flights within the US, for example, or within Europe. But for long-haul flights across continents, we still need kerosene-powered planes for quite some time. So when will the energy density of batteries be high enough to reach kerosene levels of energy densities? In 1859, the first lead acid battery sported a meager 60 watt hours per liter of energy density. In 1899, the nickel cadmium battery was invented with 150 watt hours per liters. The current standard volumetric battery energy density sits at 750 watt hours per liter. So more than 10 times higher than in 1859. And we mentioned the latest Chinese one from the lab with 1653 watt hours per liter. Again, more than twice that of current electric car batteries. Over the past 50 years, the highest energy density of mass produced electric cars has roughly quintupled from less than 150 to 750. Let's say that this trend will continue and that we are going to quintuple again. Then, by 2074, we would be at 3800 watt hours per liter, which is still only a third of the energy density of kerosene. So without any incredible technology breakthroughs, even in 50 years, the energy density of batteries will still not be as high as that of kerosene. However, of course, it should not be forgotten that the efficiency of electric planes will also greatly increase by that time. So maybe they will only need a third of the energy for the same flight duration. And therefore, we might actually fly from Europe to the US or similar distances already fully electric by then. And flying cars or air taxis are currently also very limited by energy density. They can currently only fly for around 20 to 25 minutes until they would need to be recharged. So therefore this would of course only allow for travel within cities. At a speed of say 200 kph, you could travel the distance of even very large cities from one end to the other, but you would certainly remain very time constrained and therefore air taxi travel from one city to another would not be possible. So therefore, high battery energy densities are the holy grail that will radically transform our lives. What now is in the lab, such as the Chinese 711 watt hours per kilogram or 1653 watt hours per liter battery, will be regularly in air taxis, electric cars or short range airplanes by the 2030s or the early 2040s. But batteries will just keep improving. By that pace, we'll be at 1000 watt hours per kilogram in the 2050s and so we still have a very long journey ahead of us to beat mother nature's incredible invention of dead dinosaurs and dead plants with their ridiculously high energy density. But mother nature needed tens of millions of years to form that stuff. 
We, however, will be a lot faster. In the 22nd century at some point, if the battery trend progresses at the same pace, we will have batteries with higher energy densities than kerosene or gasoline. Imagine what devices we could power with such energy densities. Flying cars that can fly for many hours on end without being recharged would not pose any problem anymore. That's for sure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe because we'll continue putting out lots of videos on fascinating technological developments. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because that would allow us to make more and better videos. I wish you a nice day wherever you are. Thanks for watching and see you next time. What is the critical threshold of the gravimetric of the gravimetric energy and even super long and even super long range energy density meaning with meaning how much well if you look well if we look at well if we look at how far well if we look at how far <laughs> well if